This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Tabletop Deathmatch is a secret underground fighting society where the combatants beat each other with parts of tables. In reality, we gather a bunch of suggestions and we review them and then we pit the game creators against each other. Not in any kind of physical combat, but just to see which games are the best. This time Salmon just got all their games in? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, this is them getting them on the it's, truck? It's super cute. Oh, my babies. <laughs> this is the greatest email I've ever I'm seen afraid. in my life. They're so cute. I love them so much, and I want them to be so successful in literally everything they ever do. I just want to have them forever. I want to be surprised by both the people that are making games and by the ideas they're going to bring. Magnets the Game is the marbles of the 21st century. What makes Magnets the Game so cool? The magnets, of course. I'm really excited to possibly work with some of the game creators for this year's Tabletop Deathmatch, especially because as a designer, it's an interesting challenge to produce an actual thing rather than a website or logo that people can actually play with, hold, keep forever, and have fun with time and time again. Uh, okay, this one I'm very, very, very excited about. Uh, I've actually play tested this. Um, so these guys came to the Tabletop Deathmatch screening in Seattle and oh, played this. Cool. It was super fun. Um, so it's called Skip Trace, and it's about a group of amateur bounty hunters who are trying to get contracts from a client who needs something stolen or somebody killed and you get um, cards that have locations, professions, and items on them, and then you use those cards to kind of tell the client how you're gonna make your hit. It's super silly and fun. That's Hi, my name is Isla, and my game is Skip Trace, and uh, I am a trans woman from Baltimore. So Skip Trace is a lighthearted role-playing party game meant for four to six players, and it's about a bunch of different agents uh, all vying for the same position. Each agent has a mission that they have to figure out how to best accomplish, and the best way to do that, they, they figure that out themselves. In a lot of ways, Skip Trace plays a bit like apples to apples. You originally get a card or a couple cards that signal your profession, and that's sort of your character that you have to roll, that you role play. Once you've established your character, you get item cards, which are your bread and butter, uh, the things that you use during the missions. You also get locations, a target, and you get an objective. Those three compromise your mission, and then your job is to figure out how to use the items best suited for that job. So Tom and I met at school. We both go to Skidmore College up in um, Saratoga Springs, New York. We just met through mutual friends. I mean, we have a lot of this, we have a lot of similar tastes. We both really love to, you know, play video games and play tabletop games. And once we had learned that we both had an interest in making games, it became a lot easier to sort of talk with Tom honestly about like, hey, we should really make something. We should really do a project together. And actually it was Tom that originally asked if I wanted to do a mini game jam with him just to make a game and just to get it out of the way. And it was at the end of the year, so he had finals and I was really stressed out. And in the midst of the finals, that was the one thing that I was kind of like, oh, well, this is, this is fun. This is like easy for me. And this is like something that I'm really passionate about. Originally, we met maybe two or three times every week. But as work started to pick up, we had to meet with, you know, Emily and we had to sort of increase our, our work output. So we did, we have since started to meet just about every day. So what's, what exactly is the process that goes into putting the list of cards onto these templates? Well, since you guys sent me Word documents, like pretty much the best I can do is copy and paste. Yeah. Um, one thing that I wish I would have told you a little earlier is something that the people at Cards Against Humanity actually do, which is putting everything into a spreadsheet. InDesign has this crazy little feature where you can actually like auto load like spreadsheet things oh, into cool. like uh, uh, you know however many cards or 
templates you set up. Okay, well that's good to know in the future. Yeah. Yeah, either way it wasn't too bad. I mean, this usually like for production work like this, it's just me like listening to a bunch of rap music just clicking away. So <laughs> Early on, one of our problems was that we originally had people either killing or capturing their targets. But after a while, we felt that that, was, that wasn't the right way to do that. Um, we started to feel as though just killing or capturing a target was just not really enough for the game. What we decided to do was we decided to create an objective deck. So instead of just killing or capturing somebody, you can have an objective to seduce your target. You can have an objective to bury your target. You can have an objective to praise your target. And that also provided a lot of variability uh, for, for players. So that became one of our strengths. So we need to change the premise a bit because it's no longer about Bounty Hunting Academy. That's true, um, that's true. Did you uh, finalize that? Yeah, kind of. I mean, Skip Trace itself is going to be a large uh, company or organization and we I mean we want to kind of get rid of all the mentions of bounty hunting I think yeah so I mean we want to change bounty hunting to agents and all that stuff so I guess just in our lore we could just say that a bunch of people came from uh, schools and they have a lot of <laughs> they have a lot of student debt yeah student loans to pay off so they have to go through this giant corporation to do so that hires yeah only the best you know when this is all done again, no one will even know this is about bounty hunters or anything. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. You know, there's no way <laughs> it's like they're recording this or anything. <laughs> Definitely not. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Well, this is our game, Skip Trace, and this is the first time that we have ever seen it in the flesh. Very much thanks to, to Emily, who, who did the design for this. She did an amazing, absolutely amazing job on this. She's really we, great. we can't thank her enough. And oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, all right. Wow. Give me, give me a minute, give me a minute. It's like Christmas. It is like Christmas. And all your relatives are watching. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Isla. And this is our game, Skip Trace. This is an improv style party game of unusual missions and amusing assignments. Players begin Skip Trace by creating their characters. Everyone is an agent of Skip Trace, an organization that helps people find work in a brutal economy. Then players choose their professions. Players then take turns establishing their character and explaining how they ended up working as Skip Trace agents. A player is chosen at random to act as the director for the round. The director draws a target card, a location card, and an objective card, then uses them to outline what the mission will be for the round. Agents draw three item cards, then beginning clockwise from the director, each agent must make a pitch explaining how they will accomplish the mission. Each agent must include a minimum of one and a maximum of two of their items cards in their pitch. After each player has made their pitch, the round's director chooses the winner or winners for the round. The player with the best overall pitch wins the target card, the player who used their surroundings best is awarded the location card, and the player whose pitch fulfilled the mission's objective in the most creative way gets the objective card. Players discard their used item cards and draw back up to three. The next round begins and the role of director moves clockwise around the table until each player has been the director once. The overall winner is the agent who has been awarded the most cards during the game. You are all very hardworking at each of your respective professions, and of course, in this economy and day and age, you just can't get enough money from that. So I need you to each go around in a circle, you know, give me your profession, tell me your name, and explain why you, why you need the extra cash. I really liked uh, how Skip Trace uh, gives each player a job, which gives them an interesting, uh, unique role in the game. They have like their own backstory, and then they can use that to then play on the uh, randomized uh, objectives for each round. I'm a philosopher, but... Uh, Spouting about what you know you believe doesn't always bring in what you need to eat. Uh, I'm Lady Jezebel, and right. I'm a psychic, and I'm just needing the extra cash to save up for my real passion, which is uh, I want to buy a boat and take to the sea. Yes. <laughs> and it does not work anymore. And you, and you Early retirement. Did you predict that? <laughs> I did. Oh, I did. Okay, I cool. predicted that I would make a lot of money in this ah, game. Very good. <laughs> I think there's some pressure with party games to be funny. So I'm always sitting there like, 
say something funny, you know? So I, I kind of have anxiety playing a game like that, but it was pretty fun. My name is Frank, Frank. <laughs> and my family's being held captive. Oh, dear. And so I need the money. As a pilot in training, I just don't get enough. <laughs> <laughs> to be the ransom? Yeah. So, so, you hear that, that's, right. that's very urgent. <laughs> there are a lot of party games out there, and I don't know if the market really needs one more, but I felt that this one added a really uh, good element of targeted uh, role-playing. So the target is a golem with anxiety problems, and uh, we're obviously doing a game jam. It's really important. So, and the objective is to actually sell a game. The thing I liked about Skip Trace was the prompts for location and objective and target, so that if you're not that into role playing, you at least have some guidance for your turn. I'm going to use, as a pilot in training, I obviously have experience using summoning sticks. So, uh, seeing that this golem has anxiety troubles, I was going to summon him some uh, anti-anxiety pills to help him out. They have this really unique uh, mechanic of the jobs or the backgrounds of each character, but they don't really seem to have as big of a significance to the gameplay. Um, and I think if they kind of revisited that and made it uh, more significant, that it'd be uh, a much more interesting uh, experience. While at a fashion show, uh, one of the newest models to hit the runway, Medusa, has her debut. And so what I need you all to do is figure out the best way to stimulate her <laughs> so that she can uh, give the best show she can give. Hopefully not petrify people. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't look her in the eyes, I guess. <laughs> That's a secondary goal. Uh, as somebody who doesn't really do the role-playing kind of thing. I, it, it really got me into the persona of my characters, which I thought was a pretty cool experience. My name is Frank. I used to be a pilot. And uh, my family died, so I need to get some money to help. But you won! <laughs> <to help. laughs> yeah, I blew that money up. I, I need to get some money to uh, just help, you know, spruce them up before we, before we put them in the ground. <laughs> Tammy Tenpins here, and I'm going to be honest with you. I always used to think that we had something. And I'm going to use my love tester to prove it to him in writing. And then he'll be so convinced that we'll go back to my room, and I'll use my Hitachi Magic Wand vibrator to, uh, to, help, to help along the process a little bit. I really liked how completely random the cards seemed. Um, everything from creepy sexual innuendo type things to uh, household objects and you're warping these things together into a pretty awesome story. My first thought is, well he wants to play frisbee, the forest is probably annoying him, but he's, he's got a bit of a drinking issue and so he probably actually likes the forest and therefore using probably one of my most trusted uh, implements <laughs> as a mortician, um, I use my blowtorch, it comes up a lot, uh, to burn that forest down. Uh, um, I've run across this, uh, this frisbee problem person in my conspiracy theorist chat rooms, and I know that he is on a drinking team. I know that he loves absinthe. So I use your old one liter of absinthe, um, and I, I drink with him all night and give him a killer hangover. And then I take a bone saw and hack at his little frisbee playing fingers just to piss him off. <laughs> you said I was going far burning down the forest. I had bone you're coming off his fingers! <laughs> I'm not a party game person myself, but I would certainly buy this game just because of its uh, playability with non-role-playing people. How can I get gamers to not pay attention to the conjoined assassin twins? And I think what any gamer will take far more offense to in a video game is the heinous use of Comic Sans. <laughs> and therefore, I will plaster Comic Sans font on every other part of the game, and they will solely focus on complaining about that. All right, there's a lot of, there's a lot of objects that are being used to hide, but I'm going to have to go with the Comic Sans. That's, yeah. that, that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> you can now save your family or revenge them. No, no, now I can. No, now I can. You can, bury them. Oh, bury them. <laughs> you can bury them. I think I would buy Skip Trace. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and it's a little bit different. It's kind of like role playing and improv is a really interesting uh, addition to a party game kind of feel and it'd be great for a nice uh, party night. 
All right, guys, thank you very much. Uh, we're actually just gonna take Isla and get a couple shots of her uh, working on the game, so you guys can leave if you want. Can't. Can we? Okay. Can um, we keep playing? Yeah, is she gonna be in this room? Yeah. Does it, do you need sound for that? Like, can we just? Can we play? play. Like. All right. Fine. I really enjoyed this session of judging. I was hoping that I would love it more than I did. We were all responding well to the humor value of it. That's gotta be great. It doesn't really have its identity locked down yet, and that's its greatest weakness.